You probably know that regulation of gene expression is partially controlled by sequences called enhancers. These sequences often contain binding sites for a variety of transcription factors. Enhancers are able to regulate transcription of target genes in a cell type specific manner. And it doesn't matter how far from promoter of some gene this enhancer is. It may even be located on another chromosome. Of course, it's interesting to determine these enhancer sequences and their location. But how? First of all, you can use DNA sequencing because enhancers are typically found in accessible chromatin regions. Also, you may remember chip sequencing or chromatin immunoprecipitation, which I've described to you earlier. Link will be in the description, by the way. You can target transcription factors and then determine the sequence of that regulatory region. But what are another options? It is a star sequencing. How does it work? First of all, genomic DNA is randomly sheared and broken down to small fragments. Then you need to insert these fragments into the plasmids. In other words, you need to make a DNA library. To that end, you need to ligate linker groups on both 5' and 3' ends of your fragments, followed by recombination into reporter vector. This vector already contains core promoter and reporter gene. Our fragments are inserted into the 3' untranslated region of the reporter gene. Then you make a cell transfection. After that, you will have a set of mRNA transcripts, each containing both sequences of your reporter gene and your enhancer. Then you isolate that mRNA, make a cDNA out of it using reverse transcription PCR, then implement sequencing. In this case, it is a paired end sequencing which I'll address in a subsequent video. And that's all. The key feature of this method is your enhancers regulate the transcription of their own sequences. Why that star sequencing is so good? First of all, it is a quantitative genome-wide assay. Also, unlike many other techniques, star sequencing allows us to determine silencing enhancers, which do not function in the cell due to the absence of chromosomal context needed. Furthermore, star sequencing allows screening multiple cis regulatory genomes in a single cell type, enabling powerful comparative analysis of differential enhancer activities that arise from sequence variation. Also, this method enables identification of a novel class of enhancer sequence elements. These are denucleotide repeat motifs, which are important for the activity of broadly active enhancers. If you want to know more about this technique, let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Good luck.